Hi, I'm Rob Dom, and I love building rotary engine vehicles. I am fortunate enough to work with TurboSmart and the entire team, and they have done some amazing things at helping me level up what I'm capable of extracting out of these engines. And particularly with their e-gates being newer technology, we've been able to do things that nobody else has ever done. My favorite thing about e-gates is going from a reactive engine-based situation to a proactive one. And that is such a cool personal growth story, but it's also based on the technology in my car. So in my case, I have the ability to tell the computer, to tell the e-gate to close down before the shift has even started to maintain as much boost pressure in my system. So that way you don't see that massive boost pressure drop that you would see with a traditional gate. With an e-gate, I actually have it sensing the beginning of a shift and it closes the e-gate 50% more, meaning that the turbo stays spooled and my boost pressure drop went from about a 12 PSI drop to five just with that one little bit. Now, again, that's predictive, that's not reactive, and that's one of the most amazing things about E-Gates. When it comes to the two style of E-Gates, you've got the poppet and then the butterfly valve right here, and you can see that traditional style and more of an open straight through, almost like a throttle body. I went from this style to this style on the four rotor, testing things out, and my goodness, this is, has slightly smaller packaging, so that's a big benefit as well, but, the boost response is even easier to control with this style of gate. I can get the, the, the pressure out of the system very quickly with this gate. This one's phenomenal. So to, to make something even better than this is mind blowing. When it comes to boost control strategy, the E-gate is really the wastegate that's with the times. Technology has just gotten so good that we have to make the car run even better and we've got the technology to do that. Again, this can do whatever you want it to do. It's not just reactive to boost pressure and having some little Mac valve telling it, hey, try and open, try and close, try and close. It, this says position, go there. And that is actually almost too much control at the very beginning. When you first get this, it's almost intimidating with how much control you have because now you don't have any excuses. Both with opening quickly and closing quickly, there are strategies that become available that you never had before. On Haltex, it's called spool assist. On other ECUs, it's the same thing. Close the gate completely until you get before you're out of control. And with the gate, you can push it further and further, or you can open it more traditionally where you're opening it slowly to get your goal. And again, that's gonna come down to what power delivery you want, but you have the choice. No springs change, no nothing. Same gate from the beginning. There are so many different strategies that I could go over what that does, but uh, we won't have enough time for me to run my mouth that much. My background is in technology. I was an IT guy for years. And so I am used to people's apprehension about new technology. And while automotive doesn't really have new technology being introduced that frequently, the IT world does. So that's a big part of how do you try new things. This is so new to many people. It's so foreign that there's understandable fear, but I can tell you firsthand, multiple cars, multiple setups, that fear is, is no longer needed. This is new technology. All the benefits that I'm talking about with none of the drawbacks people were worried about. This thing responds faster, manages better. It, it's just the, the bleeding edge has now turned into cutting edge. So you can use this as new technology and know that it will work on whatever ECU you put it to. It's very rare in the automotive industry that something this incredible, this disruptive, is just dropped on the market and you have all of these new features at your fingertips. And that created a little bit of concern from the audience. Well, the cool part is the gate has been badass from the beginning. The, the poppet style, this style has just been incredible from out the gate. <laughs> The thing was, is that ECU technology had to catch up to the technology in this. Boost control strategies that you never had the ability to do before had to be written in software. And so I think a lot of people's concerns were, oh man, what, what, what does this gate do? What, how do I? No, it was actually the, the computer itself controlling it that didn't take advantage of everything that you now had at your fingertips. And so I can tell you now we're what, two years into you know, e-gates and it's there. It is, it, 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 you're almost missing out on the, the mainstream next thing where everybody next year is gonna be like, well, yeah, obviously the E-gate is the way to go. Why are you using pneumatic? It's turned into that. And I'm fortunate to have been there from the very beginning to see it turn from bleeding edge to cutting edge to adopted mainstream technology. This is something that I can speak very much from experience on the concern about heat with E-gates. Now E-gates, both this style and the other have water cooling option. And by option, I mean it's on all of them. You, you have the option of putting on there. Now, it's probably better to run it. 
but I have ran it without them. And I have a rotary. Rotary exhaust temperatures by default are about 400 degrees hotter than piston engines. So if you're a piston engine owner, this isn't even about you. This gate is, it's, it's yawning at the heat that you're putting through it. But for rotary guys like myself, I have almost 1800 all wheel horsepower on the four rotor. My exhaust temperatures were so hot that my EGT, my, my temperature sensor, about six inches out of the exhaust, maxed out. Those things max out at 1050 Celsius, which is about 1950 Fahrenheit. So my exhaust was hotter than 1950 Fahrenheit between shifts and all this craziness because I'm dumping tons of fuel doing wild things. The E-Gate didn't care. They build a temperature sensor in there. And so I was logging all of that and you wouldn't see 1500, you wouldn't see a thousand degrees on, on the electronics here. They, they have a nice isolation to keep the hot and the cold separate. Like I said, if it works for me, it's going to work for you.